Now in this video, we would like to discuss the earthing conductor. So our earthing conductor, which we said before, it can be copper or aluminum or steel. And galvanized iron or galvanized steel is a good choice. Why? Because our uh, uh, parrot uh, pipelines and the building structures are made of steel. So in order to prevent the corrosion of the material, we said that the earthen conductors and the electrodes should have the same material. Okay, and you see that this uh, uh, wires or this conductors passes through the uh, building structure. So they all should have the same uh, value of the resistance. Okay, or the same material. This combination will not cause corrosion due to dissimilar metals. So uh, both of them are, when we are using uh, galvanized steel for all of our materials, then there will not be any corrosion due to uh, non presence or due to the absence of uh, difference in potential, potential between them. So how to select our earthing conductor? So we have here a, a few specifications we would like to discuss. We would like to select our earthing conductor according to its cross-sectional area. We would like to identify the uh, cross-sectional area of the earthing conductor. So we have here a formula for it. You will find that S, which is the cross-sectional area, should not be should be at least greater than or equal i root t over k so i is the worst case current okay or worst case short circuit current and when we are talking about the worst case we are talking about the three phase short circuit current okay so uh, this cable or this earthing conductor should at least withstand this short circuit current for a specific time which is t t is the time which the conductor can sustain this short circuit current before the circuit breaker operation so as an example if a three phase short circuit current occurs and we assume that 0.5 second until circuit breaker switches off the circuit so we'll put here the time equal 0.5 second and the current is the worst case short circuit current which obtained from E tap, or if we know the uh, the value of the transformer, we can get the short circuit current over the K, where K is a coefficient. How to get the K? This K is equal to another constant K, or sometimes called alpha, the square root of ln T2 plus beta over T1 plus beta. So according to the metal, it is copper, aluminium, steel. We have the constant K, which is in ampere per millimeter square. And we have the coefficient beta in Silesius, okay? This K, or sometimes called alpha, okay, are given in this table. So according to copper, we have these values, aluminium, these values, steel, these values, and so on. It is a large table. So we can substitute with the K. Let's uh, point on it. We have this value from the table. And we have here the beta from table. And we have T1 and T2. T1 representing initial temperature and T2 the final temperature. The initial temperature, it means that the temperature at which our cable or our conductor is installed in. For example, we will uh, assume a worst case of a 50 Celsius degree. As an example, in my country, the temperature is a 36 degree, but we will assume a 50 degree for the worst case. So this one is a 50 Celsius degree. And the final temperature is the maximum temperature that this conductor can withstand. So we can put here a 1000 Celsius degree if it can withstand. Okay, of course, 1000 Celsius degree uh, in a certain time. So during the short circuit current, so uh, assume 1000 Celsius degree and we can get the factor K. Then we substitute in this equation 
and we get a value in millimeter square which are representing the cross sectional area then we get a larger value by 10% or the next uh, larger value as an example for this you will find here uh, calculate the cross sectional area for an earthing conductor used for earthing 1.5 megavolt ampere so we have here a transformer of 1.5 megavolt ampere and we have the x per unit for the transformer 0.05 per unit we have the line voltage 380 volt find and that initial temperature uh, 52 celsius the final temperature 240 the alpha or the uh, large k 226 beta 234 uh, 4.5 now we'd like to find the area so in order to find the area we need the current we need the k we need the time so first let's find the current so we have the megavolt ampere and we have the x per unit for the transformer so we have a relation in short circuit analysis tells us that the megavolt ampere short circuit is equal to the megavolt ampere base over the x per unit so megavolt ampere base is the 1.5 megavolt ampere and x per unit is given as 0.05 so dividing uh, both of them will give us the megavolt ampere short circuit which is a 30 megavolt ampere now in order to find the current you know that the current is equal to s over root 3 multiplied by v line right so the current short circuit is equal to megavolt ampere short circuit which is 1.5 not 1.5 the 30 megavolt ampere okay this is the megavolt ampere short circuit so 30 megavolt ampere over root 3 v line of course in uh, kilovolt which is 0.38 in kilovolt dividing both of them give us a 45.58 kilo ampere as a short circuit okay this is the short circuit current so we have the short circuit current and we assuming here that our circuit breaker will operate after or uh, switches off the circuit after uh, t equal 0.5 second 0.5 second okay and the k can be calculated from the uh, function so we know that the area should be greater than uh, we said the i short circuit multiplied by root the time t over k so k will be calculated from these factors substituting in the previous equation we can get the k and we have i multiplied by root t where t is 0.5 second root t okay we assumed here at one second okay never mind okay we assumed here one second and I short circuit is assumed is as 45.58 kilo ampere and we have here a factor 6 what does 6 mean 1 over k after calculating the k and 1 over k will give us a 6 as a value so this will give us a 273.48 millimeter square as an area so by going to the catalog and searching for an area greater than this value we will find a 300 millimeter square as a nearest standard to this so this is how to select our earthing conductor from the uh, uh, perspective or the from the point of view of, of the uh, cross-sectional area now we would like to understand the uh, value of the resistance of the earthing conductor so the resistance of the earthing conductor is simply equal to R conductor equal to rho over 2 pi L len L square over 1.85 HD where rho is again the resistivity of the soil so you will find that here the earthing conductor 
depending on the soil sensitivity. So we'll find that soil sensitivity is a critical value or a critical term which uh, affects both of the earthing conductor and the earthing electrode. L is the length of course of the conductor and H is the depth of the electrode. Okay, and D is the diameter of the conductor. Okay, remember that H here is the depth of the electrode, which means that we are talking about the grid itself. Okay, as we remember that the conductor here and another one here, all of these are electrodes. Okay, group of electrodes connected by conductors. Okay, inside the soil. Okay, so this one is put at a depth of H which is the depth of the electrode. So the depth plays a critical role of also inside the resistance of the conductor. So after calculating the value of the resistance of the conductor and the resistance of the rod, we can get the value of the resistance of the system. Remember that both of them are parallel to each other. So the resistance of the system is one over R rod plus one over R conductor and the result will be the inverse okay so if the resistance is less than 5 ohm okay then it would be accepted or sometimes we will ne we would need a lower value than this we can uh, require a 1 ohm for example okay this is depending on the specifications required so in case of the resistance is greater than the requirement Okay, if the resistance greater than 5 ohm, what should we do? We can increase the length of the electrode. Remember that increasing the length of the electrode means that the lower resistance of the electrode. Increasing the diameter of electrode also decreases the resistance. Increasing the number of electrodes. More electrodes means more parallel combination or more resistance. Uh, more or lower uh, equivalent resistance of electrodes so increasing number of electrodes will decrease the resistance remember that the resistance is inversely proportional to 1 over n okay as it is was a function in n adding salts to soil we said that we can add uh, copper sulfate or uh, NaCl in order to decrease or decrease the resistivity or increase the conductivity of the soil. All of this plays a critical role in decreasing the soil resistance.